You are now listening to FMB Radio. Radio. And welcome to FMB Radio. My name is Lindsay Collins and I am your host. I know what you're thinking. Um, it's Wednesday. Why am I getting an episode? Well, I'll tell you why. It's my birthday week. I'm really going to ride this wave. <laughs> Uh, I just have to say right off the top that I felt so unbelievably loved and not just like, hey, happy birthday messages, but like messages from people who mean so much to me that were just like, felt like a showering, like a smattering, like a, like a dousing of love. And as someone who is like annoying in that they hate their birthday and always want to just hide on their birthday. I was feeling very the opposite of that this year. I was just really into my birthday and every single person that reached out, if you're listening, you know who you are. Uh, it's because of you. So many of my friends I realized not only listen to this podcast, but they've either been on this podcast, support this podcast or listen regularly to this podcast. And it really showed because the gifts and, and the, the letters and the notes and the things that people did for me or just said to me or just like told me that they've never told me before and like shared with me on my birthday, um, it blew me away. So just a huge thank you to everyone, first of all, for making it so special and for maybe changing my mind for how I feel about birthdays. I kind of wish I could do it all over again. I haven't felt that good in <laughs> years. <laughs> I haven't felt that um, seen and loved in maybe ever. So I, I must be doing something right in my life. And, you know, not to like pat myself on the back, which I, you know, I am actually doing right now, but I really just want to thank all of you. And then also, if you're a person out there who isn't feeling like that in your life, get some different friends. I think that's been a, an issue my entire life. Not that I haven't had good friends my whole life. I have. I hear my old friends out there being like, what the fuck? I was nice to you. And you were. But I'm talking more in like, as I get older, the less tolerance I have for just bullshit, kind of. I just sort of do what I want. And it's not out of like uh, wisdom even. It's kind of out of necessity. There's just less time. And so I end up having to be more decisive about what I do and who I spend my time with and who I'm around. And I know that's like a cliche thing to say, but I look up and kind of take stock in my life and how it's changed and who's in my life right now in this last year. Um, and it's, it's really vastly different for the first time in a long time. And I think that's due to a lot of stuff that really doesn't even matter. It's just kind of how my life is evolving. But all I'm saying is I feel so unbelievably lucky to have the people in my life that I have in my life. And if you don't feel lucky or if you feel like you're underappreciated, I just challenge you to really get, oof, just put some people on on uh, not not the chopping block, but like definitely don't waste your time. Because you will, through not spending time with people that you don't necessarily jive with or who aren't showing up for you and being there for you in the way that maybe they should, um, you're kind of taking up all the space in your life and you'll never have those kind of people in your life. But I feel so loved. This week was absolutely insane. I'm not going to go down all of the um, amazing highlights, but we did do, I'll keep it food related just so I don't turn into one of those assholes that's just bragging about all the great gifts I got. Like, I want to go through that as well, but that's, man, I, I probably will accidentally because I can't help it because so many people, God, they gifted me so good. And that's another sign that people really know you. When you get a gift and you're like, oh my God, this person, they know me. Um, it's the best feeling in the world and it's not easy to give good gifts. You have to actually be listening and paying attention to your friends. <laughs> it's really hard and you guys all nailed it. And I'm just... It's truly so thankful for everyone that's in my life and for all of the listeners in this universe that keep the show going and keep uh, me feeling so loved and just giving me the opportunity to get in your head once a week. That's like a huge opportunity. You know what? Maybe if I'm not being a good friend to you, maybe you cut me out. <laughs> just, I hope I am. I hope I bring something to your life. 
Um, and if I don't, man, find someone who does because it is really a beautiful thing to watch your life um, blossom and look around and say, man, I'm totally blown away by the people who love me and how they love me. And Jeremy was a huge part of that, obviously. Jeremy, shout out to you, babe. Um, he took something off my plate that I normally don't relinquish control of, especially in a party situation, but he kind of gently floated the idea of letting him take over the food for my birthday party so that I wouldn't have to do it. And I was like, okay, yeah, sure. Cause like, that's not that weird. Jeremy does that a lot. Jeremy and I sort of tag team cook almost every meal that we make, but he was like pretty, uh, adamant about getting the menu kind of in order and handling all that. Cause that's usually the thing that I like really just agonize over. And he made uh, pork buns. So he braised a pork belly. I went to h and L. I I picked up some Thai beer. My favorite is Tiger, but they had um, Singha, which is also delicious. And I got some steamed buns from the freezer section and a f- uh, so many other things. I love going into h and L. And that's a funny tie-in because at the end of this episode, I'm going to play you a little bit of my conversation with Michelle Zahner from a few weeks back. Because this is, after all, a thank you. So this is a gift. My gift to you um, is a little bit, a clip of um, Michelle's Honor and I's conversation a few weeks back, which was, again, such an honor. She was so unbelievably cool. And I'm excited to share some of that conversation with you at the end. Uh, But Jeremy did all of the work. And we love David Chang's cookbook. Uh, It's got so many amazing recipes, but they're all really complicated and take a long time, except for a few. And coincidentally, the pork buns, which are on the cover of the cookbook, Momofuku, uh, they take the least amount of time. It's a quick pickle and a braise that takes some planning, but it doesn't take that long. And the result is truly just amazing. It's one of the best things I've ever eaten. I think uh, in the book that I'm currently writing, there is a whole entire chapter that's dedicated to the anatomy of a pork bun and what makes it so delicious. And kind of that time in my life when I lived in New York and they were, Momofuku was like the world's most popular restaurant at that time, at least in New York. It was just so busy. It was so new. David Chang was really just kind of blowing up. Um, This is early days. Like there was only one milk bar, I think. And (laughs) so it was just a really fun time to be in New York. Um, And I'm always really fond of that memory that food memory around that. So he like got everything, cured it in salt and sugar over the uh, night. And then you just blast it in the oven on like 500 and then turn it down to 250 and let it kind of slowly render out the fat and then let it chill, portion it. And you put it into a steamed bao bun with hoisin sauce, sriracha, and these quick cucumber pickles that I'm obsessed with and I make them all the time because they only take about 10 minutes and the result is truly the beautiful, bright, acidic kind of palate cleansing counterpoint to that unctuous sort of fatty pork. So he made those. I didn't have to do anything. I felt like such a princess and I just hung out (laughs) and we invited a handful of friends over. It was a really like intimate group of people and it was just so amazing. I had the best time. I truly was like basking in the glow of like how um, much I'm a fan of the people that are my friends, which I think is the way it should be. Um, but I'm, I'm just love them all. And I was, it was such a good time. And then at the end, he topped it off with an ice cream cake that was truly, uh, when he made this, I was like, why have, hasn't this ever occurred to me? Why have I thought that ice cream cakes were so out of my reach? Like that was something that only Baskin Robbins could do. Or like, I don't even know, Carvel, if you're from the North, from the North, (laughs) if you're from somewhere where they have Carvel cakes readily available, I think they have them in all grocery stores now to be fair. But when I was growing up, there was not Carvel readily available, but I just thought they were off limits. Like there was some kind of crazy equipment you needed or, or magic trick that you <laughs> had to master before you could make an ice cream cake. But the truth is you can just take an ice cream and let it temper till it's pretty spreadable and movable without being totally melted, of course. Like really just temper it, get it nice and soft. 
Um, he made a beautiful, dense, like bitter chocolate cake, very adult type of cake. Um, and layered it once it had completely cooled with ice cream and then covered the whole thing in soft whipped cream and froze it overnight. And I mean, I was like mind blown. I couldn't believe it. I was like, this is brilliant. An ice cream cake. I'm never going to not make an ice cream cake because why wouldn't you just combine them? I think the only alteration I would make, and we all sort of decided this as a group, was that we would add a little buttercream, just like a, just like a roughly edge of buttercream onto the edge of the cake because there's something that I just can't quite pinpoint why it's so good, but a frozen buttercream right next to a frozen ice cream and then you have it resting on a foundation of cake, which is obviously frozen. It's pretty special. And I used, uh, well, he used, he made it, but he chose mint chocolate chip because that's my favorite ice cream flavor. So it was an amazing, amazing birthday. And as I was kind of reflecting on, I don't know, the whole entire time, I just decided that I'm going to give you guys a gift because I felt so loved and like so over the top that I was kind of just left searching for how am I ever going to repay all these wonderful people in my life for the gifts they gave me and the love that they gave me and the notes that they wrote me and the calls that people that just hit me up that I haven't even spoken to in a long time. I don't know what it is about turning 37, but wow, really struck a chord and I'm so grateful. So I'm going to give you guys a present, which is a little peek into the conversation from the music farm a couple weeks back during Michelle's honors book tour. So she was on tour for uh, crying in H Mart and the Charleston wine and food festival asked me very kindly to moderate slash interview her. And we recorded the conversation. And so I'm going to share just a few snippets kind of all smashed together from uh, a few of my favorite questions. But Michelle Zahner was so unbelievably generous with her time, cool to hang out with. And I'm a Japanese breakfast fan first. I also didn't realize that at first, until I had read the book and like put two and two together, but there was about a two week period where I did not understand that she was New York Times bestselling author and the front woman of Japanese breakfast. There was just like, I just didn't know. And then when I put it together, I was like, oh my God, she's doubly amazing. So I'm a huge fan. It was a great, great time. And have a listen to a few of my favorite questions with the Michelle Zahner, indie punk pop sensation, um, and New York Times bestselling author of Crying in H Mart. Here it is. And thank you. Thank you. I love you guys. So when the Charleston Wine and Food Festival asked me to do this, I was like, sorry, did you mean to email me or someone else? <laughs> I hadn't yet read Crying in H Mart because uh, my mom had been diagnosed with cancer. And I was like, I don't know if I can <laughs> right now. And then it prompted me. I was like, yes, I'm going to do it. Like, I'm so excited to do it. What ended up happening was it was the best thing ever because really it was like the most epic look into the wisdom and the kind of compassion and the love that you share in the book. So it really helped me. And like, yeah, so I just wanted to thank you for that. Thank you. <laughs> is there something that you, when you look back where you're like, is there advice that you would give to someone out there that's maybe not feeling supported creatively by the people around them? And like, how did you keep going when it seemed like people, like it wasn't working out and like corporate ladder would just be the right move? Yeah, I mean, I think in retrospect, I'm, I'm almost grateful that she was uh, so unsupportive in a way. I feel like... I'm going to be so supportive of my, like, kids' arts and passions that they're just going to be like, I like football. <laughs> yeah, exactly. um, I'm a CPA I'm a firefighter. now. Yeah. It's in my blood. Um, <laughs> and my husband and I would be like, no! We uh, raised you better than this. And they're like, I love accounting. Um, <laughs> I just love numbers <laughs> so much. <laughs> it's my calling, Mom. Um... But yeah, I think I just I just wanted it so badly and I tried so hard and you know, even at 25 when I was like I'm going to like work in advertising, I'm going to just get a normal job, I'm going to put this shit away. Um 
there was still a part of me that could never let it go. Um, and all, like, you know, since I was 16 years old, my mom was always just like, okay, like, and to be fair, I think most parents would respond to like, I want to be a rock star with yeah. like, calm, calm down, kid. Um, and I think that I just always, my mom was always just like, okay, you can do that, but on the side, you, you know. Um, in your free time, you'll if, be yeah, a rock star. Yeah, in your star. free time. Like, you, if you do all of your schoolwork, then you can do that. And you can do it if you go to college on the side. Uh, and if you do it, like, we're never going to financially or emotionally support you at all. Um, and I think all, even knowing all of that and trying so hard to kind of not do it or always do it like uh, in tandem with, you know, these other things that I had, these sort of obligations, um, it made me realize I, I couldn't do anything else, I think. And I, and I think that, um, yeah, I mean, if, that, if that's in you, if that like tenacity to like keep doing it um, is in you, I mean, even if it's just like 10 minutes like writing, working on a, a novel or, you know, working on a video documentary or, or whatever, like if you just set aside you know, 10, 20 minutes of your free time or, like, one, you know, day, one week de weekend day or whatever, like, if that's, like, so in you and you can't let it go, then it's it's going to happen. Um, and it's so funny because, you know, my mom, I, so much of being a creative person and, and being unsuccessful is just, like, feeling like a total psychopath. Um, and this last time I, I, I went to Korea, I, I played a, a music festival in Incheon and, and I, I had one day to, to spend with my aunt Nami, who's my mom's older sister, who's the, sort of the last one in the family left, who we talk about a lot in the book. And I go there and it's the first time I've been since the book has been translated and she's read the book. And she's so, oh, I'm wow. so afraid to, to, to talk to her about it and, and hear what she has to say. She was so excited, and she was like, I feel like we, you know, and this is all in kind of, like, broken English and, like, talking into our cell phones and, like, showing each other the translations. And she was like, I feel like you are, like, you have to hold our family's, like, stories, and I have so much to tell you. Oh and God. she, like, pulls out a piece of scrap paper, and, like, she's like, your great-great-grandfather, oh. and, like, draws a circle and was like, when, when like, movie, silent films would come, your great-great-grandfather was hired as, a, like, a very famous voice actor to do all of the voices for all of the characters in the silent film. His son, your great-grandfather, uh, also did that. Your, I always knew that my grandfather was a pretty famous um, radio voice actor, um, and he played Kim, King Sejong, like, in a, in a very in a pretty famous um, radio play. And my aunt was also a, a voice actress um, on the radio and she did various like anime, she was like Sailor Mercury and like um, various like anime characters and stuff. And she draws this like family tree with like lines from like all of the artists in my family and she ends with me and like circles my name. Oh. And I was so pissed off. <laughs> That my whole life, my mom made me feel like this crazy person. <laughs> and now that I'm, like, successful, my aunt is like, you come from a dynasty of <laughs> artists. And I was like, that's so cheap. Like, I can't believe that. Like, not only now are you claiming me uh, in this, like, family tree. But it's, it's been, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's funny how that happens. And I've, I would guarantee anyone who, who goes down that path will, like, find, have a moment like that in, in their family. My advice to you is just work so hard at it that you become successful and, and show them. <laughs> that's, that's the best advice there is. I've loved the part about, well, there's multiple parts about your mom uh, just obsessively buying QVC stuff. This is just fascinating <laughs> to me. As a it's person. like our generation. Yeah, think, yeah. yeah, oh my God. No, this is such a like visceral memory. Really just like late night, like seeing the TV on and QVC. Like your mom, like on the phone. <laughs> 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 just ordering stuff. Is there anything that she ordered that you were like, actually, that's really good? Oh, yeah, <laughs> totally. Um, I still I, use I, that. I remember <laughs> just, the first thing that comes to mind is she got one of those, um, uh, she got one of those like things that melt wax. Oh, there's two things. The there are two things. Wax yeah, so yeah, so you like dip your feet in oh, yeah. hot wax and then you like peel it off. I'm and familiar. It's like you get like baby foot. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's a good one. My the thing that we used all the time that I still wish that I had was the thing where like you. <laughs> I even thought about it. <laughs> it was like a. It, it, maybe it's like recalled at this point, but. Um, 
It was the thing, I don't even know what we were saying. It, oh, it's like when you open a bag of chips and you oh. put it in the, the thing. The, yeah, it's like the vacuum sealer, but it also just seals, it seals the plastic. Yes, so it's like, these. you know what I mean? It just makes a seam. Yes, like, it yes, doesn't even yes. cut it yes. off. So it's, it's just like a like, fresh bag of chips. Seal it. And it was so annoying as a child <laughs> because she would get so mad if you didn't like seal a bag of <laughs> chips like every time you opened it, you know? like. And I remember like drunken nights coming home, like eating snacks and then having to like reseal like, all of the, the bags. Uh, like, and I haven't said thank noise? you for unearthing that memory because I like really haven't thought about that in a really long time. But that was like definitely a QVC, a major that's QVC amazing. version. Oh my God, that's amazing. Just like you're drunk and you're like, what's this sound? It's like, oh, it's just me resealing the, I'm just resealing the tater exactly. tots. I don't remember having to do it like really quiet. <laughs> All right. So those things still, you know, they still slap. It's QVC. Um, thank you so much. Oh On a my personal God, thank you, level. Lindsay. No, thank seriously. Thank you for, for I... bringing that up because I that was a forgotten memory and that was really <laughs> special. I, and thank you so just yeah for being for writing this book for being you for spending your time with us and for talking to me um, I am just so grateful I'm a huge fan and I think your work is amazing and I can't wait to read the second book thank you so much um, audience members I think we're gonna there it is that's your bonus episode I'm actually gonna just, I don't even want to say this out loud but I'm gonna start trying to do two episodes a week it's like a very ambitious task, but I'm um, excited that things are growing at LMC Sound System, which is my podcast production company. And I've made my first hire, which is also really significant and cool on a personal note that uh, I finally have someone who's going to be helping me with my uh, other shows that I produce, which are really, really great. And you should check them all out. But uh, it's going to hopefully free up some time for me because I won't be editing as much. I hired an editor. Um and I'm looking to hire another person. So if you're listening to the show and you have either audio engineering ability, uh, content creation, or if you're just really passionate about podcasts and you want to see if you would be a good fit, I am looking to hire a few more key people as we continue to build LMC Sound System. Um, and you can check out that Instagram. It's at LMC Sound System. And you can see uh, some of the work that I do there if you want to check it out before you apply. But yeah, no like formal position is being offered, but I'm definitely looking for just the right person. I'm less looking for a role and more looking for like somebody who's excited to help me uh, make podcasts because I love making podcasts. And so I've had a lot more free time, allegedly. I will have a lot more free time going forward. And I'm going to try to do two episodes a week because I would love to do a solo episode like on Wednesdays and then bring you an interview with a guest on Fridays. Uh, no promises, but this is kind of the test, test run, test, test. Uh, inevitably I'll get like really slammed and something will go insanely wrong and I'll have to not even do the show for three months. No, just kidding. That's not going to happen. Uh, but yeah, look out for that, for there to be possibly more episodes than usual. Um, and maybe we'll get into a rhythm where you get two a week. How's that? Anyway, thank you again to Michelle's honor. Um, and thank you to you for listening and for making me feel so fucking special. So effing special. I felt really effing special on my birthday. I love you. Please rate and review the show. I always forget to say that. I always tell my clients to say that. And I'm like, how can they forget every time? And then I do it. And I'm like, oh, that's why. Um, you can do that on Apple Podcasts or in Spotify. Shout out to Leslie. You know who you are because your name's Leslie. Um, and you did review the show on Spotify. And I'm proud of you because that's not an easy task. Uh, but yeah, shoot me an email if you want to talk about potentially working with LMC Sound System or just kind of grab a coffee and see if we can set something up. My email is fnbradio at gmail.com. That's E-F-F-I-N-B-R-A-D-I-O at gmail.com. And you can come make podcast magic with me. Because uh, I have some exciting new clients coming on and it's just a great time to be alive. Thank you all so much for listening. I'll see you next week. Oh, wait, no, I'll see you on Friday. <gasps> Whoa, I'm going to have to get a new sign off. 
things are really changing. I don't even, this is so exciting. Thank you. I love you. Bye, bye, bye. Ta famille, les amis.